Gentlemen, welcome back. As we go into our part three, Father giving a blessing, I want to tell you this has been one of the most awesome things to experience with other dads. Over the years, I've had fathers and sons go on weekend retreats, and the focus of the weekend was for a father to actually take part in this blessing of their son, and also the, the son to write out a special note to give to his father, to exchange some gifts. Um, it's just a powerful experience. So I'm gonna share a little bit of that in this part three, okay? So first of all, a father's strategy. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Now this is about scripture, but I'm gonna relate it to your leading as a man. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Okay, now what does this have to do with fatherhood? Well, let me just explain it this way. If we are to be more and more like Jesus, we know that Jesus was the word that became flesh, right? So if we take in God's word, the scripture, it becomes flesh, okay? So we're not gonna become Jesus, I understand that, but we become more like him. Now, let's go and break this down as it lives out in our lives as we deal with our children. And the first one is, it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for rebuke, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So that's what we want our children to experience with us. So let me just kind of give you this, these four words. Teaching, when you think of teaching, it's like what I'm doing right now. I, I am just talking, there's words, okay? That's teaching. Next is reproof or correction or, or, or um, rebuke, reproof or rebuke. That also is verbal, okay? And, and unfortunately, most fathers pretty much stick to those two. Do this, don't do that, okay? But the next two are really where the power's at because there's some kids, honestly, that you've gotta kinda get in close with them and spend a little bit more time. And so what we're going to next is for correction and training. So it's like, son, I told you to do this. You didn't do it. Now, let me show you what you did wrong. And also now, let me show you how to do it right. I'm gonna work with you now, alongside you. And so what I find is that increase in intimacy is the pattern that God wants for us men. But most of us guys are so busy Got so many distractions, so many things going on in our head that we many times miss the opportunities. But I want to encourage you to consider that pathway. We speak it, they don't do it right, we tell them they didn't do it right. Next time around, we speak it, they didn't do it right, tell them, now let's get in here and show you how to do it. I'm gonna hold your hand, maybe you know, put a little firm hand around the, the shoulder, whatever, but we are gonna get in alongside of them. Many times children that are acting that way are doing that because they need your attention. They're calling out for your attention. Don't ever forget that. So when we think about a true blessing, this is biblical. Think about Abraham blessing his children, his sons. I won't read all of this, but you know the passage. And he brought his children around when he was getting close to death. And these are the things that were always included in a patriarchal blessing. There was a word of encouragement, details regarding each son's inheritance, and prophetic words concerning the future. It's pretty daunting, that last one. But I believe that we should do each one of those, and they're based on character. That's what they're really based on, is character. The classic and the example that we all really want to use for our gold standard is what God the Father spoke right after his baptism by John the Baptist. God the Father said simply, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What does that have in there? It's identity. This is my beloved. I love him. He's my son. It's my identity and my relationship in whom I am well pleased. In other words, I, I love him and, and he is, 
He is doing what I've asked him to do. He is walking in the paths of righteousness. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I'm telling you guys, that one line, every chance you can for your son, for your daughter, substitute the word daughter. Our daughters need that desperately. Are we speaking that kind of blessing on a regular basis? A lot of times you might think of a ceremony or something and that's important too. But am I saying these kinds of words on a regular basis? So in these weekend retreats that I've had that have to do with a father's blessing, these are some of the things that I have the guys do. He's going to say as a father, I love you because, I am proud of you because, and all of these things, I am proud of you, are not having to do with sports, music, looks, strength, all those things aside. It's all about character. That's the only thing that really matters eternally, guys. So I give them a long list of character attributes and they go through the list and they, they, they circle the ones that are the really strong ones for their child and maybe pick out a few that maybe they need to work on. But when they address them in the blessing in, in this prayer that they do for their son, they really are specific about these strong character traits that are gonna be a blessing in their life and also the areas that maybe God is going to be working in that pinky format. And then the last part of a blessing that you wanna to give to your son and even to your daughter, but we're particularly thinking about sons, I see that you are on the path to becoming a fine young man. I am here for you and want to offer my blessing for your journey. So in so many words saying, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And usually there's a gift that's given something tangible. I know many of the dads with younger boys, you know, getting to the age of maybe 10 or something like that, they might give them a little pocket knife and show them how to use it and all this stuff. Depends on, on, on the situation, but that's something that's been good. But again, this, this PowerPoint has a lot more information that I'm gonna go through here, but it's just, I love you become, because, and here's some specifics. Um, I'm proud of you because, focus on character quality, not achievements. I see that you are becoming a man after God's own heart, whatever. Something that is just such a powerful blessing. But preparation for the blessing, giving out the blessing and living out the blessing are all three are important. You don't just do it on a whim and you don't live out that blessing on a daily life. Uh, you have to do it all, all the time. So here's a step-by-step, -step, step one, going through these things plan a special day, give the blessing to your son. At this point, you will speak your blessing to him, offering him his symbolic gift, which symbolizes his success. And step four, continue to speak words of affirmation and demonstrate unconditional love into the life of your son in the days, months, and years ahead. Your role as a father never ends. It just changes and becomes richer as the years roll by. It's one of the most powerful things you can do, guys. I challenge you to consider doing that in the days ahead, plan a special event, get that special gift, write out that blessing. And if you need any guidance on that, we've got a resource that we're gonna post here with this video. So good luck with that, guys.